Upload type zero here with Super Fights series video number seven on Humphreys versus Mendoza. Um, just want to acknowledge quickly that um, this is the first um, Super Fight series video I've made since the fight with Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather has been officially announced. Getting back to where we left off, Jack Brockton was the you know big star of his era in boxing, which came to an end when Lord Cumberland, I, I guess he was the son of the second son of the king, not an heir apparent to the throne, but was um, Brockton's patron throughout his career, had uh, basically forced, well enticed Brockton to come out of retirement and face uh, a very dirty fighter. And then when Brockton lost and Cumberland lost all his betting money, he did the puss move of taking his ball and going home, basically in a grand scale. Um, he made boxing, had boxing made illegal in London and basically... Between that and some other stuff, between the period of 1750 and roughly 1788, boxing had fallen into its dark ages. Um, it went out of style, it was illegal, and um, uh, basically I'll read you a little quote. Champions of little worth succeeded each other with the rapidity of the emperors who followed Nero, leaving the public scarce time to learn their names. The decline of boxers' ability, the increased amount of fixed bouts, and the withdrawal of the royal patronage all signified the depth to which boxing had sunk. Indeed, boxing's dark ages had arrived. So, and that's from this essay. Ugh. 18th Century Boxing by Randy Roberts, which is excellent, and you should look it up if you're interested in this. Um, okay, so basically, you know, long period of, you know, 30 years or so, boxing is, you know, basically illegal, and, and in that time you also have the American Revolutionary War, which I'm sure commanded the public's attention. But... Uh, there came a guy who, who, you know, it seems like each of these periods followed the rise of a very popular fighter. And in this case, that person is Daniel Mendoza. Daniel Mendoza was born in England, so he's an Englishman, but he was of Spanish um, descent, uh, obviously Mendoza. Um, and uh, he also was a Sephardic Jew. Um Basically, he was working in a tea shop um, or some kind of store, and there was an argument between the owner of the store in which he thought that the owner was being bullied around by someone, and he, the, the, the guy who was bullying the owner challenged the owner to fight him, and Daniel Mendoza stepped in and took the fight and you know uh, beat the guy up. Um, and therefore um, gained himself somewhat of a reputation. Now, this wasn't a boxing match. This was a fight to settle a dispute held in, in called a duel with fists um, at the time. So this little guy, he was only 5'7", um, and, you know, as opposed to Fig and Brockton, who are these big, you know, six-footers, you know, muscly type dudes. This guy was 5'7". He was kind of like a Stallone-sized guy, but he only weighed 160 pounds and uh, therefore, you know, was fighting almost always with much bigger guys. Um, so the super fight that I want to talk about with him was... Uh, oh, and also Mendoza sort of... Um, created the scientific style of boxing. He, he, if you look him up, you'll find he created six lessons on which to teach anybody how to box, at least under the terms of how boxing was handled in those times. And he had eight 
basically eight laws or eight, you know, eight principles, which he felt were the most important principles to remember when you're fighting. Uh, you can find those. I might put a link in the description box to show you exactly how revolutionary he was. He sort of invented sidestepping, turning your guy, because he was smaller than these big guys. He had to use tactics um, that no one had ever really seen before, and apparently he was quite uh, the scientific, you know, Floyd Mayweather type, Pernell Whitaker, Willie Pep type guy of his time, um, but also had the power to knock the bigger guys down. Um, so basically, he got into fighting after uh, you know that that argument dispute um, at the tea dealership, and then um, he started fighting. I guess he met this guy Humphreys. Uh, Richard Humphreys, and uh, Richard Humphreys was training him for a little while, and you know he got to he got in a couple big, well publicized matches with you know mediocre competition. He fought Harry the Coal Heaver, and uh, let's see, the Bath Butcher. Sam Martin, the Bath Butcher. So after he fights the Bath Butcher, um, he gets introduced to the Prince of Wales, and the Prince of Wales likes him and um, and basically makes boxing legal again. And all of a sudden, boxing's back in fashion, and every rich person wants to be the patron of a fighter, and it became very common uh, to patron be the patron for a fighter, and you know it was in fashion. Uh, sorry to repeat myself, there's just a lot of information here. So, uh, along the way somewhere, um, Mendoza gets, has a falling out with, with Humphreys, who's training him, I guess, at the time, and they get in some kind of argument, and they decide to fight each other. So they go to fight, in the first fight, um, some something happened to where it didn't end. I mean, it's credited as a loss to Mendoza, which I don't really think it should be because um, even though the Boxing Hall of Fame says that Mendoza stopped the fight because he was injured, every other source I've found says that what really happened was that uh, Humphrey second reached into the ring and blocked one of Mendoza's punches, and that's why the fight was stopped. I don't know why you know, that's credited as a loss to him. I Personally, I, that should be a DQ for Humphreys, but that's just the way it's recorded in history. And uh, the second fight, which they fought three times, was their super fight and was the super fight of this era that began what, what's considered to be the golden age of British boxing, or at least the first golden age, or maybe, I don't know, depending how you look at it. Um, and that period was from 1789 roughly to 1812. So this bout that I'm about to describe right here kind of ushered in the golden age. All right, so after the first bout with the weird ending, um, Mendoza and... Uh, and um, Humphreys meet at some tavern to discuss terms for uh, a second fight. And uh, they agree, and then the fight's publicized. So this is where we come into the whole super fight thing, right? They have the meeting, they sign a contract, their letters back and forth in the newspapers of them insulting each other and building up the hype. Uh, and then... Um, a spacious amphitheater was built for the purpose of viewing the battle, which consisted of seats round a space 48 feet in circumference. Now, when they say circumference, it makes me think circle, but then they talk about corner, so it seems like a 12 foot by 12 foot squared circle uh, was the ring. 
uh, approximately two, in between two and 3,000 people were able to sit in this uh, amphitheater, and it was stadium seating, so each level was able to see the fight above the last, um, and that was sort of a new thing. Um, every person could see clearly and distinctly. Um, so <clears throat> basically what happened next was uh, between, you know, in the, in the middle of the day, uh, Humphreys gets there, he gets there first, walks to the ring, he has his seconds, Mendoza uh, comes to the field shortly thereafter, they get in the ring, they get ready to go, all right, and now I'm going to read from an account of the bout. I'm not sure who wrote this, it possibly might have been Mendoza himself, but I don't think so, I think it was someone else. Um, so, uh, just as a quick note, the way that bouts were being fought were under the Brockton rules. You can be sure you can find the Brockton rules um, somewhere online so you can see exactly how that worked. Um, and just one thing I'll point out is that in the Brockton rules of fighting, basically you fight until someone goes down. If someone goes down, that's the end of the round. Then they have... Um, 30 seconds basically to recover and come back to fighting again. Okay, so a round could be however long it took to knock someone down, okay, for someone to go onto the ground. So, you know, a round could be 15 minutes, it could be a minute, it could be 30 seconds. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, pay more attention to how many minutes the fight actually lasted than, than the rounds. There really weren't very many breaks either. Okay, so, uh, okay. Humphreys aimed the first blow at the face of his antagonist, which is Mendoza. This Mendoza stopped, returned it with great quickness, and knocked him down. Okay, so basically you're talking about a parry encounter, which was a revolutionary, um, you know, thing at the time. So Humphreys comes out, he's the aggressor, he throws a punch, parry, counter, he goes down, end of round one. Okay, so the second and third rounds terminated in exactly the same manner. So he's basically just, you know, knocking this guy down, one punch knockdowns at will. Uh, with the parry and counter move that he probably created. After a contest of about 40 minutes in which Mendoza had evidently evidently had the advantage, generally catching his adversary's blows on his arms and knocking him down or throwing him, a cessation was put to the battle by circumstances which created much confusion. So uh, for um, 21 rounds, let's say, you know, Mendoza's knocking this guy all over the ring, using his defense, uh, blocking, car carrying, uh, parrying, countering, and knocking uh, Humphreys down. Uh, so, so then something weird happens. In the 22nd round, Mendoza struck at Humphreys, on which the latter dropped. Okay, so Mendoza throws a punch, and Humphreys goes down. But there was a rule in the Brockton rules that anyone who went down for without getting hit or just went down like you couldn't just take a knee all right it had to be a slip accident or you had to get hit and go down so if you went down you know without being hit that was considered you lost the fight so apparently Mendoza throws a punch Humphreys goes down and you know there's some confusion as to whether or not the punch hit him and whether or not he should be DQ'd at that point. So then there's a big fight, you know, everybody's jumping in the ring, it's sort of a melee, not not fight fight, but argument, uh, which almost turned into a fight between the two trainers. Um, and, you know, Mendoza was basically resigned to like, you know, you went down, I've knocked you down all over the place. I'm not, you know, you, you lose, man. You went down, I didn't even hit you. But they argued and argued and argued, and it became apparent that, um, you know, if Mendoza didn't continue to fight, they were just going to lie and say that he quit or something. So he gets back into it, 
Uh, let me find my place. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, so they set two again, and the two first rounds were terminated by Mendoza knocking down his antagonist again. They fought near half an hour, during which time Mendoza appeared still to have the advantage and at last gained the battle by a palpable violation. Okay, so they kept fighting for another half hour. Mendoza still knocking him down, knocking him down. And then the fight ends finally, decisively, with a clear violation on the part of Humphreys. After some blows had been exchanged in the last round, Humphreys retreated and Mendoza advancing aimed a blow at his opponent, who again dropped. It was evident without receiving the blow. He was universally declared to have lost the battle with regard to real, uh, real skill in this contest. It is universally allowed. Mendoza had the superiority. Even the best friends of Humphreys do not scruple openly to confess this. So basically, uh, you know, Mendoza dominated this guy and um, he went down without getting hit again. This time it was much more obvious and they ended the fight. Mendoza was the winner. But then Humphreys uh, decides to do the proverbial excuse maneuver, which was invented probably, um, you know, in uh, <laughs> ancient Rome, as I said in one of my videos. After the fight, he claims to have been sick and injured, even though, you know, there was a long buildup to the fight and he never mentioned that. Um, he challenges Mendoza and they fight again, and this time Mendoza beats him even faster and more decisively in the third fight. 